and I'll just be doing the dishes and I'll say to myself, I wouldn't be surprised if we never saw Denise Richards again. <laughs> I wish I could do the Katya like wheeze laugh. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think you have to smoke a pack a day. I know. From ages like 12 to 30 in order for that to I happen. know. I have like three years under my belt, so. Never gonna reach that oh, no. Katya Zonolochka oh, no. status. I know, unfortunate. But hey! Um, but, oh, hi, hey, what's up? This is The Swamp. It's our podcast. It's an acronym. Stands for some whack ass movie podcasting. No, this is not The Bald and the Beautiful. If you were so taken oh. by <laughs> our impressions of Trixie and Katya just then that you were like, wait, wait, since when did Trixie and Katya do movie reviews? Oh my well, god. I, I would listen I, to their movie podcast, obviously. I think between the two of us, I think I'm the Trixie and you're the Katya. I think, I think yeah, that makes the most sense to me. Katya also, like, has, I don't know, mm, she's like a horror girl and I'm not that guy. Yeah. I couldn't, I could never watch, um, what is it? It's like the most gory shit. Um, the Babadook? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! Oh, I don't know. It's it. It'll come to me later. Human but. centipede. No, it's pretty recent. The terrifier. That's it. Oh oh yeah. Wasn't that one where people were like literally like shitting their pants yeah. in the movie theater because like Probably. their body went into fight or flight? Yeah, Probably. absolutely. The fuck not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Um, but mm-hmm. hey, oh hi! This week we're doing Drop Dead Gorgeous. It's the end of A May Adams. Even though, wait, is tomorrow gonna be June? Fuck. Are we? No, 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 no. no. We're safe. We're safe. We're safe. So this <laughs> is a little late this week, but yeah. that's fine. Um, and I, at the top of the episode, want to give a big shout out to Izzy at official, official, at official Princess Izzy on Instagram. That's kind of a tongue twister. Official Princess Izzy on Instagram yeah. uh, suggested that we cover this movie for A. May Adams, and thank fucking God. Literally, I was about to say, this is... Thank you, Izzy, because I needed this today. Easily the best movie that we have covered this month, and we haven't yeah, even but... talked about it yet. And her best performance, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. I... Don't need to see Amy with her fuck-ass lip gloss. I don't need to see her permed out doing an English accent. I need to see her being weird and horny. Yeah, I need to see her do a backbend. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Over um, some homoerotic wrestlers. Right. Brilliant. So funny. Um, but yeah, we're covering the movie Drop Dead Gorgeous from 1999 this week to round out our Amy Adams-themed month. I had never seen this movie, no. neither had you, right? I, had, I didn't had, know a thing about it going in. The only thing I knew was, not to keep talking about Drag Race, but um, I only knew from Drag Race, somebody did a referential runway look of the uh, Mount Rushmore like headpiece that, was kind. That, that she wears during like that little segment mm-hmm. and like somebody did that on drag race as which i didn't even realize it was a nod to the movie really? i just thought it was its own thing and then yeah. i was like oh this is the movie mm-hmm. that's doing the thing that's of the thing so really working backwards there um mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah i was pleasantly surprised i did not know what to think feel any of the above going into this and it was just it was a it was a delight i was and it made me laugh Im- more than i expected it to immediately like hysterical it, like, kind of gave me whiplash a little bit, though, because it's, like, a quote-unquote black comedy, dark comedy, like, whatever you want to categorize sure. it as, yeah. of, like, you know, like, there's anorexia jokes, there's, like, old men being creepy about yeah. the underage girls and the pageant jokes, like, you know, they're doing some, like, quote-unquote risky material, Yeah, you know, for 1999, so I can understand how it's kind of edgy, but, like, sure. for me, I feel like the things that were funny like, hysterical laugh-out-loud funny were, like, the really subtle, like, the subtleisms, like, the apple orchard being labeled health foods, like, absolutely fucking killed me. Or, like, her being the beautician at the morgue Mm -hmm. and doing her tap dance while she's doing the corpse makeup, like, had me wheezing. But it was, like, the overt jokes about, like, mentally disabled people people. and, like, the anorexia joke Uh that kind of just, like, 
took it dragged a on. Bit, yeah, that that one didn't need like, to go. I was like, I get that you're like doing this like intense, you know, like we're really not holding any punches kind of comedy. Mm-hmm. But some of those jokes were just objectively like actually not funny. Like you not can funny. make an anorexia joke if it's funny. But it yeah. just wasn't funny. Just wheeling a girl out in a wheelchair saying that she's a pageant queen who has anorexia is just not really that funny. No. Um, mm-hmm. You're just like, you're just like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna talk mm-hmm. about the thing no one wants to talk about, and therefore it's edgy, like whatever. So I feel like I was constantly having whiplash of like uh-huh. Kirsten Dunst having these little moments that like uh-huh. literally had me like doubled over, and then uh-huh. like Will Sasso coming on being that character and i was just yeah. like yeah this is a, this is like weird like well no. it was just no it was truly like everything that they that was almost like a detail or whatever like you said was just a lot more funny than the overt things that they were trying to like push the boundaries with yeah <laughs> the deaf girl or not not even the deaf girl she oh was- my god <laughs> the girl who was obsessed with being deaf that's actually kind of an example of like that was funny that she got hit in the head and became deaf and she was so happy thrilled that Um, was like yeah that's an example of how you can do that and it that worked for me i was like that's kind of funny her doing like fake sign language at first really gave me the ick because i'm like Uh anyone who just does like vague hand gesturing and then they call it sign language i'm like ew like yeah like just like learn how to do it for real even if it's a joke but i'm like if the joke is is that you're just flailing like that's not funny but then Uh her getting hit in the head and becoming deaf was hilarious Um, oh yeah yeah. i'm so refreshed like watching a satire that still feels like such a good depiction of like Mm -hmm. the united states because it's only gotten worse now you know what i mean I feel like satire has become, like, this, like, post-ironic sort of thing yeah. where it's, like, in a in a, an area where, like, the thing that you're making fun of is, like, you know, America, so, so to speak. Like, the state of America is actually so dire and upsetting mm-hmm. that you have to be brilliantly funny oh, yeah. to find a way to, like, make me forget about mm-hmm. that and laugh at your joke. Whereas it's like, oh, I get that you're, like making fun of the state of things, but it's really just making mm-hmm. me think about the state of things, right? Yeah. Whereas this, I do think, had the the nice, uh, you know, rose-colored glasses of the mm. 90s on it, where it was kind of like, it's middle America, and it's about the American dream, and sort of the simple mm-hmm. Midwestern, you know, pageant life, and, and mm-hmm. yeah, I thought that that was like a a better, more general focus than, yeah, like, I think a lot of satire nowadays is, like, a little less palatable to me. Especially exactly. also, um, like, the mockumentary. I feel like this... <sighs> so good. I'm, after The Office, I feel I don't care. as if yeah. no one can do the mockumentary anymore. Like, the mockumentary is unfortunately kind of dead. Absolutely. I would love to see a revival, and a revival of it in a way that people don't immediately just compare it to The Office, and I think that yeah. that's why a lot of like comedy writers probably stray away from it, because they're like, even if we do this really well, everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's just like The Office, which is just like, ugh, like, that's not what you want. Um, yeah, just exhausting. The, on the last it was a real pe- pleasant surprise to me, though, that this was in that format. I didn't think that it was going to be that at all, yeah. so I was really tickled. The last thing that I'll give, like, its props to, mockumentary-wise, is, um, what is it called? Like, Documentary Now. Yes, which From, is a like, mockumentary of a document. That was, like, yes. so many levels of being meta. That it exactly, was o- so it's brilliant. Almost... Almost no longer a mockumentary. Exactly. Like, they just into... they just remade the documentary. You know what I mean? But not even like I don't even know how to explain. It. The uh, did you have the high school teacher who had us watch the Grey Gardens one? Yeah, I'm obsessed. I think they show he showed like the original clip and then um, showed the um, the Grey Gardens one or whatever. And now I've had. Um, my bio on like Twitter and Instagram has been staunch woman for the yes. last ten years. Oh so Bill it's Hader left an sweatpants, impression. Sweatpants, sweatpants on, on the head. head, like that has never left me. Yeah, I would. I actually didn't even think of that as being something that is like a mockumentary, but I guess it is like a mocking documentary in yeah. the most literal sense. But yeah, I I just feel like that that as an art form has kind of like fizzled out, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Um, mm-hmm. But it was nice to see it like untainted by the 
mid 2000s sitcom mockumentary ism that happened um and i thought it was really charming i thought it was like having kirsten dunn speaking directly to camera in a conversational tone was like way funnier than i would give it credit for i thought every actress was phenomenal Mm -hmm. i thought all of the um the performances were like really comedically on point no one was flopping allison janney coming in hilarious oh my god um the thing that really, like, started me up, because already, like, from the jump, I was like, okay, Chapel Roan, let's get into this. Midwestern Princess. Mid- yeah, Midwestern Princess. Um, But fucking Tammy blowing up on the tractor. Oh my God. <laughs> like, really told me what this movie was going to be like. And, then, and mm-hmm. after that, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm buckled up. I'm ready to go. We can start the ride now. Because when... It was when perfect. Lovely- when lovely listener Izzy uh, suggested this movie, I, of course, did a precursory little Google to just see what was going on here. And it was like, you know, mid synopsis, Midwestern pageant, uh, you know, goes awry when a series of murders, yada, yada, yada. And you kind of get the sense that it's like, oh, the pageant girls are killing each other because it's so competitive. That's mm-hmm. like what I went into it knowing. But her exploding on that tractor, I was like, oh, so it's not going to be like slasher funny where they're no. like... Like, going after each other, it's, like, literal terrorism. <laughs> like, like, literally. Which is fucking... even more funny, because, like, 90s-wise, like, enough slashers. Yeah. We get it. I got it. it terrorism? Is... Kind of funny. The deaths were actually, like, not as gory or violent as I was expecting them to be. You mm. don't actually really see any, like person-on-person no. violence. It's always, like, Denise Richards, like, setting up a mouse trap <laughs> that someone falls into, right? Like, yeah. a, like a lamp that's been unscrewed falls uh-huh. on a girl's head, or, like, you know, when Denise Richards is in the swan thing that blows up or whatever. Uh-huh. It's always just, like, seemingly an accident, because, of course, that's what it had sure, set yeah. up to be. But I was, like, I was expecting, like, fist-to-fist combat between Brittany <laughs> Murphy and fucking Kirsten Dunst or something like that, you know? I loved this so much more because it was so, like girl power sisterhood coded as well i loved i mean not to skip too much into it but i love britney murphy's character in this i love britney murphy period r.i.p queen 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 shit um but yeah i don't know i thought that they were able to sneak in so many subtleties Mm -hmm. about these characters like amy adams's character who like really on paper should be one-dimensional right she's like a horny cheerleader with a jock boyfriend (laughs) and is super into that and yeah. that's it. But, like, even with her, we got a bunch of, like, weird moments. Like, when we first get introduced to her, she does, like, this little fish face. Uh-huh. This, like, she, like, puckers her lips and does this weird fish thing. And you're like, girl, what are you on? Like, what are you doing? And it's perfect. And, like, you know, the character, the note that Brittany Murphy's brother is, like, a Liza Minnelli impersonator uh-huh. in New York, and that's why she's obsessed with the Big Apple. Just, like, those weird little details that really made every character feel so well-rounded to me, even exactly. if they only had, like, five minutes of screen time. Which I feel like we don't get in the slightest in any movie these days, because it's all so focused on, like, whatever main character, um, that they don't even take the time to develop all these other people so you don't care i feel like there is like an epidemic of poor dialogue writing (sighs) don't get me started in tv and movies right now where like just two people speaking to each other always feels clunky unnatural cumbersome not adding to the plot or adding to the plot so much to the point that you're like oh you're just saying expositional dialogue Stuff what are to you get saying? Story moving, right, like, like okay. It's like I just feel like <laughs> it's like when you're young and you like pick out a book that's above your reading level. That you're sitting there, and you're like, I know these are words, but none of it makes any sense, and I don't know what this is trying to tell me. That's me reading any book now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just kidding. I I'm like currently reading a like a literal YA series, and I'm like. This is about where I'm at. <laughs> like, I feel like that's like every my brain woman has turned right to now, mush. though. Every adult woman loves YA at the moment, as they should. Like, there's an adult. I work at a library, and there's like fully like an adult book club that meets at a brewery, and they're reading. They're reading something that is 
sectioned in our this is a library sanctioned book club mm-hmm. that's it's called like books and brews or something of and they're course. fully reading a ya book and, and i, I like, love I, it i love that for you girlies and it's also smut and i'm like i'm like does whoever works at the library who like organize this event know mm-hmm. that all these women are reading porn mm-hmm. dragon porn and talking Definitely. about it like under our roof because i love i love it and they're having so. fun and that's what matters and i was having fun with this movie because i just like when alice and Janney and kirsten dunst have three lines of dialogue exchange and then we just learn everything about their characters mm-hmm. and it doesn't need to be like i am entering the pageant i am your mom's trashy friend we are having uh-huh. a conversation right now. It's just like, she hands her the whiskey. She says, your mom would want you to have this. She, she gives her a look and she says, just kidding. And then she knocks it yeah. back. And that's all I need. Oh my God. Exactly. No, it's truly remarkable, like, what your movie can be when you let actors act. And yeah. you give them something good. I will also say that this is written by a woman. Yes, did see that. Um, did you know that she was the third um, judge who never spoke the whole time? That's so fucking funny. Yeah, the two judges were uh-huh. the guy who owns the hardware store, yeah. whose brother, Will Sasso, was just, like, present at all times. Uh-huh. The creepy guy who was uh-huh. just, like, out, that was his job. What did he, he was, like, a pharmacist or something. Yeah. He's, like, the creepy pharmacist, and then just this woman who never gets introduced and never speaks, and that's the, the screenwriter of that's the That's iconic. Is, yeah, really funny. Did you know that she also wrote Shark Tales? No. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which Icon. makes sense as to why I love both this movie and that movie. Icon. Mm-hmm. Love that. Mm-hmm. But... The not to you know get on my feminist high horse, but I think it simply must be said that this movie had a fifteen million dollar budget. It only made ten million at the box office. Yeah, so I'm not a shocked. certified a certified flop. Money was lost uh-huh. this movie, and it's now edged into a territory where it can somewhat be called a cult classic. But I would even I would I would say more like like niche niche uh, hyperfixation interest yeah. of. Some chronically online people, like, maybe. I don't... Yes, I don't think it's quite there. It's certainly no Jennifer's body. But I think it absolutely should be. I think this clumped in with, like, Jennifer's body, but I'm a cheerleader. Like, very much those types of movies, I think is perfect. And I know Amy Adams... This is actually... I think we said that Catch Me If You Can was her first movie when we covered that a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. and that must have been a lie because that was 2002 and this was 1999 oh, so yeah. i do believe that this is amy adams's first official film credit and she was phenomenal i loved her um so she kirsten was Dunst, like, will you please cover up the hickeys on my neck and the bites on my ears oh my and in between my thighs <laughs> oh my god so like Oh. When she was so excited to win third place, love that fucking cracked me. When she didn't know the difference between second runner up mm-hmm. and third place, also fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so she was like obviously a nobody at this point. Kirsten Dunst uh, was a, very early in her career, hadn't really quite popped off yet. So we we've got a couple of instances of like they are uber famous now, but like not so much back then. So I can kind of give it that. But the fact that this this cast was so insanely star studded and it did and it did awful, awful reviews, no money, and it's because people hate women and yeah. don't think women can be funny. And it's insane because I was looking into this because I was like, this is wild. This is wild that this level of stardom and star power and an actually funny movie. Like, pretty short runtime. Seems like it would be the kind of thing people would enjoy. You know, mm-hmm. kind of edgy humor, making fun of, you know, the American state of whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, why was it such a flop? And obviously it's because 95% of, you know, the speaking roles and main characters are all women, women. yeah. Predominantly young girls. And I was looking into it, and on IMDb they had this fact that when they ran the original cut um, with, like, uh, test audiences, Mm -hmm. they were like, yeah, there's really no, like, male characters in this movie, so we can't really, like, get behind it. And so they were like, yeah, there's just that one guy who's creepy. And, And so that's when they added the... So almost... All in post was added. Um, all of the the Will Sasso he played Hank the brother, the slow. See, because uh, so that brother. didn't even need to be there. 
And that's why it felt so out of it, because they added it in post because they, quote, needed a male character that was relatable. Like, what do you mean <laughs> relatable? He was, like, whipping his dick out and huffing paint. I'm like, that's what's relatable to men? It's just stupid boy I, humor. So, yeah, of course, like, they would like that. I could but, imagine uh, watching this with a man and this, that being the only thing that they laugh about. But so. I'm like, how, in what world do you laugh at Will Sasso pretending to be developmentally delayed, but you don't laugh at Kirsten Dunn's tap dancing while doing makeup at the morgue. That is objectively so funny. Like, what do you mean? That Not everyone has good away. taste, Dara. He was supposed to be the relatable male character stand-in. Are you fucking Wild. kidding me? Wild. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> yeah. Kirsten tap dancing did it. Um. One of the ones that really got me was um, the Asian couple that adopted the American girl. Oh my god. <laughs> that was also, like, one of those that kind of rode the line for me. That, like, at some points it was edging into, like, you're just saying the obvious thing uh-huh. and not doing anything funny with it. Mm-hmm. And therefore that's not funny to me. But then as soon as they introduced that that couple also had a teenage daughter yeah. that they just wanted to adopt an American girl mm-hmm. to like acclimate to the country, that's fucking hilarious. Exactly. Like, I wish that dynamic had been explored a little bit more because I think that there would be a lot of, of funny stuff kind of uh-huh. to tap into there. Especially because it's a predominantly white movie, so I feel like having that element of like, mm-hmm. yeah, we're pointing out how like problematic, you know, mm-hmm. communities of all white people are so insular and are so problematic without even knowing that they are just because they just don't have experience with i don't know outside communities so just plopping them in there was like really throwing a wrench in it um Mm -hmm. yeah i thought that that was really funny but again at some points kind of questionable oh hey you betcha it's jen here to do her best minnesota accent did you you watch Uh, fargo what did you they all have Minnesota <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> no. Yeah, this movie just also took place in the Midwest. Um, instead of chocolate or vanilla, <laughs> today we'll be doing the Midwest Accent Challenge. Just kidding. Um, chocolate or vanilla, it's Jen's interim podcast segment. She's going to say two things. We're all going to say which one we like better. Jen, how are you? I am really good. How are you guys? Hang in there. Pretty good. Oh, is there a theme this week? <laughs> um, there is a theme. So for Drop Dead Gorgeous... These are things that are beautiful versus things that are dead. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. And I'll take that. <laughs> chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. We didn't chocolate this week. <gasps> Whoa! Chocolate for the sweep! Mm. I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> um, okay, first one. All right, things that are dead. Things that are beautiful versus things that are dead. Uh, sushi or fish and chips? Wait, I'm confused. <laughs> I just think sushi's beautiful. <laughs> mm. The sushi's also dead. But it's dead and beautiful. I mean, I but can understand. beautiful. I can understand how some people would think fish and <laughs> chips are beautiful, but will you will you clarify this for me? Are both answers dead, and one is beautiful and one yes. is ugly? No, most of them are not. This this one was the worst one. <laughs> but sushi or fish and chips? <laughs> I'm gonna pick. Sushi. I think I'm actually I am like a half ass sushi person. Like Same. I'll have shrimp tempura and then the fuck ass ones that our local place does where it's like fully like grilled bulgogi. Right. They're like it's a chicken and waffles roll and you're like yeah. what's going on here? Yeah, it's fucked up. So I don't feel like I can really call it sushi. Um that I consume, so I'll go fish and chips on this one. Um I I will go sushi. Uh, next one, Margot Robbie or Philip Seymour Hoffman? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Jen. Um, I'm gonna, I, I guess I'll pick uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. I Do you have to pick him because he's dead? Like, maybe. <laughs> I think so. Uh, I do think these are both great actors, um, but I obviously think that Philip Seymour Hoffman was just phenomenal, so I'll go um, P.A. Wait, how, Philip Seymour? P.S.H. P.S.H., yeah. Thank you. I- I'll go Margot Robbie. <laughs> um, next one. Big Gold Hoops or Infinity Scarf? 
<laughs> Infinity scarf is dead. That's so funny. Um, honestly, I think if I saw somebody wearing an infinity scarf, like, out in the wild, I would, like, it would give me a blood clot. Like, that would really, sh <laughs> like, shake me. Mm. Um, I'll say big gold hoops, because I wear pretty, pretty big hoops, and I just, the other day, one of them fell off while I was going throughout <sighs> my day, and I lost one hoop of my favorite set of gold Damn. hoops, so I'm in the market for some... Lightweight, big gold hoops, if anyone has any wrecks. It's a tough find. Um, I wish I was a person that wore big gold hoops, but um, look at me. <laughs> um, but I have a lot of respect for the girls that can pull it off, especially like a MILF with a big gold hoop. Love. Oh, yeah. I'll go, um, I'll go BGH. <laughs> PSH in a BGH. <laughs> uh, next one. Is Kira Knightley or RBJ? RBG. RBG. <laughs> oh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That's a dead person I won't be picking. I'll pick Kira Knightley. Can I pick Kira Knightley's jaw? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go Kira on this one. Okay, me uh, me too, me too. Next one Scarjo or Prince? I'll pick Prince. Scarlett Johansson has said some. Like, not outwardly problematic, but, like, roundabout problematic mm. stuff. Like, about how she thinks that she can play... She Didn't she say she's like, I could play Harriet Tubman? And everyone Probably. was like, no, you can't. She's like, it's not about race, it's about acting. And they were like, yeah, but you can't be Harriet Tubman. <laughs> like... <laughs> um, yeah, obviously I'm gonna go for Prince. Prince. <laughs> I'll go Prince, too. Um, the next one... Is a peacock or a turkey vulture? What? Oh, is the turkey vulture dead because it's like picking it at the circles scraps? dead? Yeah. <laughs> I'll pick the vulture as a roundabout way of shouting out our friends, the Pop yes. Culture Vultures podcast. We were just on their show. We did. It was so good, you guys. Oh, I meant glad. to tell you. We did a, yeah. a 2000s movie bracket draft. I'll link. The episode in the description below if you'd like to go listen to it it was a lot of fun so and if you remember they fun. were on um our monster house episode as mm -hmm. well so i'll pick the turkey vulture um i'll go i'll go peacock on this one for when we were in copenhagen at like this big giant like fairground type of thing and we just walked up and there was a peacock standing two feet in front of us and we were all like the three of us are like are we having like a simultaneous like vision like are the three of us like having just like an out of body like what is going on because it was fucking cold as shit it was zero degrees oh my god and we were at we we're at like a christmas themed theme park yeah and just out of nowhere, not in a cage, not in an exhibit. It just walked like across walk the street. Just walking across was a fucking, like a full ass peacock. Yeah. It was insane. Did it like feathers up for you or anything? No, no it was chill as hell. It was just yeah. minding its business it felt, as if it lived there. It was giving like in the flea bag when the hot priest is like followed by um, foxes or whatever. Mm -hmm. It felt like that, because it felt, for some reason, there was no one else around. That's why I was like, are, am I, like, having a, a moment right now? But, like, right. you were also like, what? Yeah. No one did drugs. We were all just like, huh? I will also go peacock, because they're beautiful. But I used to work at a place where we all had, like, our treatment rooms or whatever, and mine had a picture of turkey vultures. <laughs> why? Like, <laughs> why? I don't know. It was, like, weird <laughs> art. <laughs> And one of my patients was like, those are turkey vultures. And I was like, what? That's so <laughs> like, funny. Um, uh, next one is sunrise or sunset? Sunset. I'm not trying to be up that early ever. I think, hmm, this is tough. I think sunsets generally have the better colors. So I'm going to say sunsets. Yeah, I love watching a sunset. Um, next one is Chris Pine. Or Jimmy Buffett. Oh, <laughs> Jimmy Buffett. Oh, R.I.P. I feel like Jimmy Buffett could do Princess Diaries 2, but mm. Chris Pine could never do Margaritaville. I don't know. He's given Jimmy Buffett these days. Yeah, he could. Oh, my God. Biopic. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Jimmy Buffett on this one, though. Yeah, I'll go Jimmy Buffett. R.I.P. Mm -hmm. uh, next one. Jessica Alba or Tina Turner? Tina. Miss Easy. Tina. 
That's like yeah. almost offensive that you put those yeah. two people in the same like head to head. One is beautiful and That's one like, is dead. What was it? Uh, I'll never forget the one where it was like the woman who sewed the American flag and then Harriet Tubman. <laughs> Betsy Ross or Harriet yeah, Betsy Tubman. Ross. <laughs> That's what this feels like to me. <laughs> My favorite of all time was Chad Michael Murray or Jesus Christ. <laughs> Which... And Jesus lost. So <laughs> say what you will. Jessica Alba or Tina Turner. So oh, Tina Turner. Tina, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Tina. Okay. Last one. Michael B. Jordan or Robin Williams? <laughs> Robin Williams. This one is equally as offensive. <laughs> yeah, Robin Williams. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go. No, I'm gonna go with Michael B. I just like never really got Robin Williams' humor. I just he was just a little too much for me. Yeah. Even in the bird cage. No, the only the only thing I ever Genie. liked him in was Genie yeah. and Aladdin. I was gonna say yeah. I feel oh. like we were like an Aladdin household. That's yeah, really Aladdin. heartbreaking, Jen. No need to spit on the man's grave, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I feel super disrespectful. <laughs> thinking Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> um, but that is it for gorgeous or dead chocolate or vanilla. <laughs> gorgeous you. or dead. Um, I identify as dead in, in mm. that scenario. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you, Jen, as always, for being here and providing us with some <laughs> riveting decisions to make. Uh, we love you, and we'll see you next week. Okay, have an awesome night. I love you guys. Bye. Bye. Denise Richards is so fucking good, dude. Uh, I, I love. To, so, like, I'm sorry to Denise Richards, and I'm sorry to Kirstie Alley. I will say this up front. I don't know them. I don't know them personally. But I almost wonder if those two women are so dumb that they didn't realize that they were in, like, a satire. Like, I think they got that it was a comedy, but I don't know if they... Because Kirstie Alley... Mm -hmm. who was the mom, um, and, like, the pageant showrunner mom. She's a full-on Scientologist. She's, like, one of... She was one of the elite Scientologists. I didn't know that. She was at the apex of Scientology to the point where... <coughs> didn't she, like, get were... away from it? No, I think she was, like, a staunch defender of it. I'm pretty sure. I, is she I don't dead? Know. I... Yeah, she is dead. Yeah, she, she died. Die? She died in, like, 2016. I think. Shit, really? Um, just of cancer. I think she was just, like, old. Um, Shit. But she was a Scientologist, and it was to the point where the, when they were filming this movie, they, like, wanted her to come onto set to do her costume try-ons, like, before mm -hmm. shooting. And she was like, no, you will have all of my costumes sent to the Church of Scientology, which is where I will be doing my prep. And that is where I'm... She's like, you know, don't get me a trailer. I'm not showing up to set. I'm not doing anything on set. You, I'm going to be at the Scientology church and that's where I'm going to be. And that's where you can find me. And they were like, okay, Kirstie Alley, you're an A-lister. So in, oh we really need you for this God. movie. So, okay. But yeah. So I'm like, she must be kind of an idiot. If you're really that into Scientology, you must be kind of dumb. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, she was and, playing herself at that point then. And then not to like judge anyone based on who their partner is, but Denise Richards was married to Charlie Sheen for like a really long time and yeah. is, she's also one of the real housewives so i'm like does she like this and starship this and starship troopers i'm like does denise richards know that she's in satires probably does not she know, does she know that i mean maybe she's i don't know enough about if her we never say. heard from her again i, I wouldn't, wouldn't be shocked, shocked. <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if we never heard from denise richards again <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was trying to look into, like, what her whole deal is, and it was just very much about, like, her tumultuous breakup and, uh, you know, divorce oh, I'm sure. with Charlie I'm Sheen sure. and yeah. custody of their kids, and, you know, he's ripping coke off of a stripper at Thanksgiving, and, mm -hmm. you know, all of this stuff that I was like, this isn't really giving me insight into who she is as mm -hmm. much, but I was just like, is she, like, because it was such an earnest performance, I was like, it might be too real. It might be so earnest because she didn't realize that she was in something that was being made fun of. And that's why it was so good. Who's to say? Truly. That's why. Because she was taking it so fucking seriously. I I would like to think that, <clears throat> you know, people aren't idiots. And maybe they were just doing it for the check. But I, I really couldn't say on that one. When she did her little dance with the Jesus 
statue. Oh my god. That's when this movie, I was like, oh, so this movie has the juice. This movie has the sauce. Like, like you I'm... are, you are brilliant if you've written some of, like, I mean, I, I honestly, I think this movie is really good. I really enjoyed it. It had my full attention. And yes, some of it was really telling that line of what's okay and what's not okay. I was thrilled and I was having such a fun time and I haven't had that much of a, a, like a fun movie going experience in a while. And it was such like an observational Uh comedy of just like about what a lot of middle America (laughs) small towns are like the Mm -hmm. dynamic without really like punching down too much. Exactly. You know, it, it like, they're not making like was... fun of, like, Alice and Janney and um, Kirsten Dunst for living in a trailer park. There's not, like, any jokes about, like, oh, they're trailer trash type of thing. It's just, like, the mom got a beer can melted to her hand. Which was hilarious. <laughs> Amazing! And, and, like, yeah, kind of a fun, humorous way to be like, yeah, you know, trailer trash, whatever, but, like, we're not gonna say that. We're just gonna have her have a hook hand because she was holding a beer when her house blew up. Like, that's, that's, like, how you get there. That's, like, that one extra step of not just, like, pointing and saying the thing. Of, like, actually putting something clever on top of that so that we as an audience can, like, receive. It just showed me that, like, this was someone that actually took the time to make a good movie, which I feel like a lot of people don't these days. I'm also just, like... Um, subconsciously bashing Furiosa while I'm talking about this movie, but yeah, that's r- for right. the Patreon. If you stay tuned on our Patreon, we're gonna talk about Emily and I saw Furiosa the other day, and I gotta be honest, if any of you out there have seen it and really liked it, can you please tell me why? Because I'm not getting it. All the girlies online are loving it, and we didn't like it, but I'll I'm save furious. it for the Patreon. So, I'm Furiosa. <laughs> But, yeah, we'll do that over on the Patreon. But, yeah, just, like, weirdly befuddling by the state of uh, current blockbuster (laughs) cinema as it stands. I was like, damn, should we have gone to see Planet of the Apes? Truly. Who knows? But, yeah, no. I just think it's it was a movie that someone took their time to write. And, like, you know, funny people that know that you have to work to be funny sometimes. And that not Mm -hmm. every joke is gonna be a fucking hit that just comes out of your mouth. You're gonna have to go back and, like, write it and rewrite it. And you gotta, like, build up to it, right? Exactly. Some funny things in this movie were only funny because we had context of who these characters are, because we we get those weird little moments that are maybe not, like, belly laugh funny, mm-hmm. but are kind of, like, you know, exhale out of your nose yeah. funny. Well, it's like Alice up- and Janney, like, seducing the bartender. Oh, that was really that yeah. was so good. She is maybe the funniest person alive. I Alice know. And Janney, I, I know that if I'm seeing a movie and Alice and Janney's in it, I'm gonna laugh, and then I, I and I will be so content even if she is on screen for less than five minutes. I love I would, her. I would like to think that this is like the precursor to I Tanya. Mm-hmm. This is where she like she did some of her prep, right? And she's like, "What if I take that lady and make her nasty?" Mm-hmm. She's, she's like, "What if I take that lady and make her a huge fucking yep. cunt?" And that's what won her an Oscar. Yeah, I would, absolutely. I love to see it. I think that's what I used to to sell this to you. I was like, "Listener suggested has Amy Adams in it, but not too much." Uh, and also Allison Janney. Yeah. And you were like, "Yes, perfect." I'm in. <laughs> Um, Which I feel like also this is an interesting moment to sort of pivot and like the whole Amy Adams of it all of like the she doesn't have her Oscar. She doesn't get her flowers that we sort of have dismissed throughout this whole month of being like, okay, can y'all fucking chill? Like, she's fine. Like, she's fine. Kirsten Dunst doesn't have an Oscar either, bitch. And that's what I think we should be talking about. Truly. Thank you. I except I heard that that movie Civil War that she was just in was like super mid. So I'm not I'm not saying it. She needs it for that. But I am like for her. If we're gonna if we're gonna pick like, a middle-aged white work, woman to really raise up in these trying times. No, I am. I think it should be Kirsten, not Amy. I am a hundred percent on that train with you. I agree. Since we've come to the end of Amy Adams, I think we can both concisely say that I find her overrated, not mm-hmm. deserving of an Oscar just yet. Hasn't done anything she's... to wow me. I think she's a good actress. She's a good oh, actress. Absolutely. She's, she is a lot better than a lot of people. And yeah. I think that that is great. And I would love to see her in stuff. Not every I'm actress excited. is Oscar worthy, though. 
And Oscar is also not, like, necessarily the, the pinnacle. I think I'm using Oscar as, like, an umbrella term, meaning, like, in that upper echelon yeah. of, like, legends of people that you just think of when yeah. you're, like, like Meryl Streep, right? Like, we're mm-hmm. talking the top of the top. I just, I haven't seen anything from her that really makes me I... think that she deserves that status i think she's more of a golden globe girly i Mm. think that she is really good when she gets to play fun and light characters um i'm thinking the muppets i'm thinking this movie i'm thinking um enchanted and all that shit like give me goofy little amy you know what i mean i think she really sells that and she can really lean into it but like yeah the serious stuff that i've seen like it's fine but I, I think it's fine. There's also this, like, weird mindset now where, like, an award-winning performance has to be something super uh, intense, which we talked about a little bit on our Nocturnals mm-hmm. episode, uh, Nocturnal Animals episode, yeah. where it's, like, just because a performance is about a really intense topic, like assault or just like trauma in general doesn't mean it's inherently good like i feel like light silly comedic performances should be also awarded the same way absolutely that really heavy material is because it's hard to be funny mm-hmm. being pulling off comedy is objectively way fucking harder than absolutely crying and screaming like absolutely i'll tell you what though amy deserved an oscar for her dancing in this that little oh dance God. number that they did. So, um, you mean the one with the chairs? Yes. For, she, which, there was a lot going on. Um, yeah. But she put her, like, everything into it. She, the girl could move. I want to see think, her, I want to see her dance. I think she was a trained dancer before she decided well, that to makes do sense. acting. Like, I think that she started her, you know, entertainment biz, like, Mm. with the intention of being some sort of dancer and, and, you know, fell into acting. Um, But yeah. Why isn't she on the stage? She seems like she would be a great stage actress. Maybe she is and we just don't know about it. I I mean, maybe, yeah, truly. Maybe I'm Maybe she's too rich for that. Maybe she's too rich to work. But, like, you know what I mean? I could see her doing really well at that. And obviously, like, there are some people who are great for the stage. There are some people who are shit for the stage. You know what I mean? If you want to hear us blabble all about that, like, go listen to our fucking Romeo and Juliet episode. Um, But I think she's animated enough. And I know she can sing. Like, I want to see her out there. This is is my swan song to get... Amy Adams onto a right. Broadway production. I also feel like, though, maybe the industry views her currently as being, quote-unquote, too old mm. to be doing something like that. You know what I mean? I feel like the industry sort of phases out any woman older than 35 just for, like, any opportunity ever. Um, I mean, doesn't Sutton Foster still, like, act on Broadway and all that oh, shit? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, that's true. Yeah, maybe it's less so for, like, stage shit. Maybe they're a I little don't know. less Patty Lapone's still out there. I love her. Love. And it's a musical! <laughs> um, Stop. Don't get me started. Um, I do want to ask you a question, though. And I, I should have given this to you ahead of time. I have um, one of these for you as well. But so which we'll... girl are you? Out of all of the pageant oh. girls, which one are you? <laughs> I... Because well, I have an answer for tough. who I think you are. The actress girl... Who no. does the Soylent Green no. speech? No. Um, she kind of spoke to me. She, yes, I, yeah. Um, was there, I, who, am, who am I? Who am I? Tell me who I am. Um, to me, you're the girl, um, that when they first came out, she has the big ball of twine on her hat. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and she's like, I misunderstood the assignment. <laughs> So funny. I think she's also the one that um, did dog barks as her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. She was like, oh yeah, they had to take a piece of my butt to fix my oh. stomach. From this yeah, the dog one who's bite. the one who was so obsessed with her Rottweiler. I her thought, German Shepherd. So, yeah. That was so funny. I feel like you're one of like the punk girls in the bathroom who was like too. Good I have to be, magic. but like out of the contestants, I've got to be a contestant. Mm. I feel mm, like do you did was there one that spoke to you about yourself? I Not feel particularly. Like you, you could be Brittany Murphy. I feel. 
I think I could be Brittany Murphy. I could also be the Asian American girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when she came out and her like her talent was like pretend shooting like pop guns. <laughs> I was like, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe something in the Britney Murphy line, but he, it's one of those, too. I just love how she was, like, just obsessed with her older gay brother, and she's just like, everything about my personality is just how much I love Guess my older what? gay brother. He's gay! He's gay! <laughs> oh, so, so funny. And I loved, I really did love that moment, though, when she's like, they okayed my costume, so you can take exactly. it. And that's and she's like, that- I'm not gonna win, and I was like, bitch, I, that's... That really, I was like, oh, so this movie has layers. So it's exactly. making me giggle, but it's also making my heart strings. Exactly. Twitch. I don't know if I was just extra heart stringy, though, because it is Brittany Murphy and just seeing her, yeah. especially like looking happy and healthy, like mm-hmm. always just is like upsetting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Devastating. But um, my question for you is okay. similar, sim- in kind of a similar vein. If you currently had to, in some world i don't know have to do something where you have to wear a hat of an american (laughs) monument what monument would you want your headpiece to be what monument i i did really like the ball of twine yeah like what like american landmark or like what sort of like big american headpiecey thing would you go for because i think that Mm -hmm. the mount rushmore one was so cunt um I feel like I could do like the bean from Chicago in mm. Chicago, like a big reflective. That'd be bean really slay shaped thing on my head. I um, think it'd be kind of fun. I know up in like Vermont, there's the tallest filing cabinet. <gasps> yes, it could be like Amy Adams's uh, George yeah. Washington monument, except yeah. it's just your head is just a filing cabinet. That could be kind of a surf. Yeah, that could be good. Um... Uh, can I do one of the sunken ships at Pearl Harbor? <laughs> yes! <laughs> like, cracked in half on yeah, the head. Yeah. Like, we can get bedazzled. We can get camping exactly. in, I think. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of good answers for that. Um, I feel like to represent Massachusetts, if this was, like, a pageant situation yeah. where you have to represent, like, your home place, yeah. I feel like for Massachusetts, I would do, like, a big Dunkin' iced coffee, like, an mm. extra large Dunkin' iced coffee that's the color nearly of milk. Like, yeah. it's, like, it's, like, an almost white coffee. Oh, my coffee. God. Have you been getting all the TikToks of, like, Dunkin' employees showing what people's fucked up orders are and how they make... The- it's my favorite thing on the app right now. Because no. it's, like, people that are, like, eight sugars, mm-hmm. four pumps of iced caramel, like, three pumps of vanilla, three pumps of coconut, and it's, like, a large iced coffee. It is maybe, like, two ounces of cold brew and, like, four creams on top. It is insane to see. That's, yeah, I remember in high school, girls would jokingly call their Dunkin's drink their 7 and 7, because that's, like, a cocktail, but they, they would call it a 7 and 7 because you would get a large iced coffee with seven creams and seven That's sugars. disgusting. And I'm like, that's ice cream. Like, that's what? a base. We're about to churn ice cream. The worst, I would, would you pick up coffee before school? Because I didn't. In high school? Yeah. Absolutely the fuck not. No, really? I was sleeping I in. I think I also lived pretty close to the school where yeah. it would be out of my way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would sleep until it was borderline unacceptable. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I feel like there was a while when I was younger when I would, like, wake up to, like, do, like, curl my hair. Do you remember oh, yeah. waking up at the ass crack of dawn to, like, put on fake lashes and curl your hair for fucking high yeah, school? Yeah, dog. That shit is crazy. I put on a full face. I don't do that ever now. Full Even if beat. I'm going to an event. I had foundation. I haven't owned foundation since I, w- like, went to college. Do you have any, like, emotional support makeup from high school that you refuse to throw away? Because I still I have, have the like, Naked 3 palette. The Naked! I was just about to say, I have, like, a Naked palette yeah. straight up from, like, 2013. Yep. But I, I feel like I can't throw it away because I'm like, this was the holy grail of makeup oh, yeah. back in the day. It fully will give me conjunctivitis if I use it, but oh, I just yeah. refuse. Absolutely. I refuse to throw it out. Yeah, I have a couple eyeshadow palettes like that that I'm uh-huh. like, this is shady. This is shady shit, but I'm not tossing it. Yeah, no. I Well, Jen, pu- Jen pulled out... Uh, um, fucking infinity scarf um, yes. in chocolate or vanilla and I definitely remember like wearing my sister's mm-hmm. and yeah I would get up because what time did school start like 7.25 or something like Se- that yeah like 7 something, something fucked up 
But if I you took bel- the bus, the buses got there like at seven. Yeah. So we had a little bit of time. But if you drove yourself, you I remember could show getting, up. I remember getting there at like getting up at five a.m. Mm-hmm. to shower and yeah, do my hair and beat my face. It was crazy. Wild. Absolutely, Absolutely not. Um, but yeah, the worst I would ever do like with a coffee was like a caramelized latte, and that was it. I used to. I- I never went life, bad. I, I didn't, I think I like didn't understand how to order a coffee correctly. So I mm. would get a coffee with cream and sugar and then I would ask for mocha in it. Cause I think I was like, mocha is the flavor. Sugar mm. is the sweetener. But like that mocha just means chocolate syrup. Yeah. You dumb bitch. Like yeah. it's, that has sugar in it. Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> that's like my little brother orders a caramel and chocolate latte with cream and sugar. So I'm like, it's a latte, so it already has milk in it. And it's Oh caramel. my god. I'm like it's caramel and chocolate, so it already has sweetener, but then you're putting cream and sugar on top of that. But he also I, I can understand like young people like don't actually like coffee. You just want like a sweet drink, which is true of myself sometimes. Sometimes I just want chocolate. Every now milk. and then, yeah. Sometimes I'm like I want my coffee to taste like a dessert. Absolutely. Like, I get it. Yeah. But I mean that was like I don't know. Everyone had that first Starbucks experience where you get the fucking caramel, like, crunch frap mm-hmm. or whatever. And you're like, oh, this is coffee? This is what being an adult is? This mm-hmm. fucking rocks. Yeah, literally. The <laughs> best day of my life. Meanwhile, I'm drinking the amount of calories for three days. <laughs> for, a, for a newborn horse. <laughs> like. <laughs> um, dang, I don't think that... Yeah. I can't think of any other good uh, monuments, though. Yeah. Massachusetts-wise, dunks. You could be the shit that you take after dunks. Oh, my God. The amount of times we talk talk about our post-Dunkin' Donuts shit. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I don't smoke Can you imagine Ben Affleck's shits? I bet he's so regular. I bet it's, like, (laughs) clockwork. He pops his little donkeys, and he's like, J-Lo, I'll be set to go. Mm-hmm. Wait, are they are they divorced? Did they get a divorce? In the process of time? getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have you I've... seen all those memes about him and Matt Damon being gay to- together? Yes, and all the Which could be nothing. About, about how she's a horrendous person to work for, how she's just, mm-hmm. like, is a nightmare. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I feel like maybe they deserved each other, but... Probably. That's neither here nor there. Um, what is here, though, is... Our opinions on what to eat and drink for this movie. Oh, I'm so glad you said it. Mm-hmm. Um, I my answer for what I am serving at my little party is I loved at one point like the pageant committee. They're like they say to the girls that they're doing their little interview portion, and they're like, "We have coffee and bars." Yeah, is like what they refer to, and I was like, "What is that?" So I needed to look into it. And in the Midwest, like specifically in Minnesota, I think bars uh-huh. refers to as this dessert dish that's usually brought to potluck. And I know them as a scotcheroo. I don't know if you know what this is. Yeah, I know what they are. They're fucking delicious. They're so good. It's a rice it's crispy crack. treat. It's a rice crispy treat that you make with peanut butter and butterscotch chips. So you do rice krispies with peanut butter and butterscotch and then you put it in the pan and then you just melt chocolate on top of it. And I've but they just call them bars out there. They're like bars. That's crazy. It's like what are you bringing to the potluck? I'm bringing bars. So I fucking love that. I love that colloquially they're just like everyone knows what that is. Uh-huh. It's so prevalent. I wish every function I went to had bars. Yeah. I love... I've never been to the Midwest, so I can't say shit. I don't know but anything about it. It's one of the parts of America that I low-key kind of respect the most. Because mm. I, I feel like, like the, the people, upper Midwest. The people out there, I don't know if they always vote the way I would necessarily do, but they all seem, like, genuinely so nice. And mm. not in the, like, not in, like, the, you know, I'm a bitch to your face, but I'm actually going to be really kind to you like they are nice and they're kind from yeah. from what i've observed i also fucking live for the midwestern accent so good this movie had me tickled fargo has me tickled of course. But even like th- this is really played up obviously because it's a movie and it's a comedy mm-hmm. but when i meet someone in real life who's just got that little twinge mm-hmm. of of minnesota of 
fucking Michigan. Yeah. Ooh, I love that shit. The way those people say the word challenge. Mm. Ch- challenge. I'm saying the word challenge. 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 Is it challenge? It was a real Amazing. challenge. Oh my god, I'm getting goosebumps. I <laughs> love it. I would say in all of the American dialects, mm-hmm. the Midwest accent. Yeah. Oh, I'm putting it the S tier. I love that. Mm-hmm. And then, like, maybe, like, deep Louisiana as a second. Oh, yeah, that's um, also a good one. But I don't mind Boston either. I kind of, like, yeah. we all just sound like we have a speech impediment, like, dropping <laughs> our R's. Yeah. Like, do you know um, on TikTok right now, like, princess? Yeah, princess. Princess, <laughs> I'm calling you. Like, that, you're just from Boston. Like, <laughs> like, like you just can't say your R's. Uh, but anyways, I'm bringing bars to the function. Great. I'm I'm getting thank real, God getting real Minnesota with it, and I'm bringing bars. And then I looked up what like the I just googled Minnesota cocktail. Okay, because I wanted to see, and the overwhelming majority um, was this thing called bootleg. So I was like, Oh, I'm so excited to hear this. And it's honestly kind of classy. Okay, so let's go. You make something called bootleg mix. Mm-hmm. Which is, you blend together lemon juice, lime juice, simple syrup, and mint leaves. And you blend it. That sounds so, great. So you pulverize the mint and yeah. in basically citrus juice. And then you can use gin, vodka, or bourbon. <laughs> Every recipe is just So basically just whatever you want. And club soda. So you make your, your bootleg juice. And it's basically like, I would say like a cross between like a... Like a uh, mojito, mojito and like a like a vodka soda sort yeah. of. Oh, that's sort of perfect. Deal. I think it sounds lovely. So I think you get real Minnesota with it, and you have your bars and your bootleg. I think that's a great idea. And I think idea. that sounds lovely. I think that does sound lovely. Um, I took a lot of inspiration from the commercial that they played in the middle of it. Of uh, one of the ex pageant girls um, talking about how she loves this pork yes. product. I love um, it so much. I work here now. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I just thought that a BLT, and mind you, I love a BLT. I am a big BLT girl. Um, it just gives me like hot Midwestern American summer. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, that and a dirty Shirley. Ooh, love it. Exactly. I, speaking of ads, I watched this for free, but with ads, because I was, like, not in the mood to pay $3 today. Of course. And so I was like, I'll watch it free with ads. And so it was on this streaming platform. Never called, heard of it. Called Reverie. Yeah, did I, you watch I did this the same on Reverie? Th- I did the same thing, but there wasn't any ads online. So, so whack. R-E-V-R-Y. Reverie. Branding itself as an LGBTQ streaming platform. This should be there then, yeah. Which, sure, but it had ad breaks, probably, I would say probably 10 ad breaks throughout the entire movie, which was kind of a lot, but it was the same ad every time, and it was about uh, gay people vacationing in Puerto Rico. Like, it's like a travel agency for, specifically for gay people to go to Puerto Rico, and how how accepting everyone in Puerto Rico is. I was like, I love this. I was like, I'm not even mad that I have to watch this same ad over and over, and I'm sold. It added to the ambiance of mm-hmm. the film, to be honest. I was uh-huh. like, I'm ready to watch this Puerto Rico travel ad again for the ninth time. Thank I'm God. ready. I'm gassed up. Show me these happy little gays. And then what movie are you going to follow this up with at your little party? It's little easy for party? me. And I've definitely said it a hundred times, and I'll say it a hundred more. I want another pageant movie. I want a little tap, a little singing and dancing. I want the cunt and the camp that this movie brought, and I'm going to tell you to watch Hairspray. Oh, I thought you were going to say Miss Congeniality. Never seen it. Because I don't really care for it, but I kind of hate, I kind of hate Sandra Bullock rom-coms, if we're being honest. It's not for me. Not, yeah. It's not a rom-com jam. girl. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Hairspray is a great, a great choice. I was also going to say one that I've definitely said in the past, which is Starship Troopers, which is just happens to be another satirical comedy uh-huh with Denise Richards in it. Uh-huh. But I also am going to say this whole time I did just want to watch Little Miss Sunshine because that's just, like, my favorite yeah, movie. Yeah, pageant movie. Also, pageant movie, yeah. All, which also <laughs> really, like, in a nuanced way does the, like, men being creepy at children's pageants kind of yeah. joke. But, like, it's, like, you know, but 
actually funny mm-hmm. or like you know i don't know nuance the way they do it but i yeah. also think that you could i don't know where on streaming it is but just go watch any episode of the tlc show yep. toddlers and tiaras because yep. that shit is so fucking crazy amazing the flippers the little the little moves they do the little mm-hmm. like finger waves and the heart around the face if you can incorporate some of those into your day-to-day like I mean, lexicon is, like, what you're saying, but I mean, like, your day-to-day just, like, movements. Mm -hmm. Go up to your coworker and kiss your pointer finger and then do a little finger (laughs) wave at them. They'll be befuddled. (laughs) Incorporate some pageant movements just into, like, like, oh, I'm trying to seduce you. (laughs) Like, the the I know you watched the hell out of that one. Oh, yeah, the fist under the chin, and then you iconic. nod. Yeah, iconic. So, like, what what was going on? Uh-huh. And it made probably millions. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like, why do I feel like I categorize Gypsy Rose Blanchard, JoJo Siwa, and Honey Boo Boo are all in the same of, like, the yeah. a- apex predators <laughs> of the reality TV system. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> like they're the ones who the cream of the crop, baby. They're the ones mm-hmm. who are making front line news. Honestly, justice for Honey Boo Boo because I think her mom stole all of her money. Yeah, and now she just yeah, like wants fucked. to go to college. That's so fucked. Yeah. Um. Oh. Yeah. Alana. Sad. <laughs> Pretty sad. Have you seen the ad for the new Lifetime Gypsy Rose show? I haven't, but I've seen I'm- the. I'm well, gonna I've send seen, it to you. Please. I, well, I've seen the clip of her um, on the new season of The Kardashians. Oh my god. Amazing. She just, it's insane. It's just insane. But. What would you do rate you this? Wanna play, oh, I'm just gonna say we need to play Fuck Mary Kill. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm gonna say Allison Janney, Kirstie Alley, and. The mom. Do we wanna do like the. Yeah, uh, Kirsten Dunst's mom? Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm gonna marry Alice and Jenny. Duh! I'm gonna obviously yeah. kill Kirstie Alley, and then I'll fuck the mom with the beer can hand. Exactly. Easy. It's it's not Easy. even it's yeah. I am going to agree with you wholeheartedly. Not um, even a game. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then um, out of ten, I'm gonna give this a six and a half, maybe a seven. I'll give it a seven. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna give seven. it a it was, nine. It was. <laughs> I was, like, really so pleasantly surprised by this, and I really, I liked it a lot, and I do envision mm-hmm. this as being something I'm going to put on again. Absolutely. Like, for a vibe. But mm-hmm. there were just certain not well-aged jokes, or just jokes that were absolutely not jokes and just, like, making blatant, yeah. offensive things that, I, that did just rub me the wrong way a little bit enough mm-hmm. that I wouldn't put this up there, but the funny shit was so funny yeah. that I borderline did not care. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I'll give I'll give it a free pass. To be honest, no. thank you so much to our listener who suggested this. This is yeah, Izzy. Shouts out official yeah. princess Izzy. This, this is one really of my favorite movie. movies that I've watched, or like my favorite new movies that yeah. I've watched in a long time. Um, and so that wraps up Amy Adams. Thank God we kind of oh my God. fucking oh, we kind of fumbled. We kind of fumbled the May pun. I this know. Year. We'll have to really get after it next year. But if y'all want to send in some retroactive may pun suggestions for us to put in the bank feel free to but Please. we're moving on onward and forward and mm-hmm. next month is pride month uh which hell yeah we always do something gay and this mm-hmm. year we decided that the world is too sad right mm-hmm. now and i'm Absolutely. too stressed so i want something lighthearted and happy so mm-hmm. we're gonna do gay rom-coms uh-huh. just anything sort of light i wouldn't say is a is a prerequisite but just like silly rom com not taking itself too seriously. Exactly. I don't want to watch movies about how all gay people are depressed or die. Yeah. Like, that is just not like, I get it. I get it. Moonlight is a wonderful movie. I don't need to talk about it, though. And I think that this one should be about queer joy. So we're gonna do exactly. some, some if... joyful little rom-coms, and we've got some a tentative lineup, but if any of you have some yes. favorite queer rom-coms that you would like us to cover, please drop those in the suggestion mm-hmm. area, which is literally just anywhere you can find us or speak to us. 
Um, also, yeah, be sure to check out our Patreon. Um, I We have, like, a decent number of backlogged bonus episodes, so if you Absolutely. become a patron now, you can hear us talk about challengers. You can hear us talk about poor things. We cover a lot of, like, Barbie, movies so Oppenheimer. Far. Barbie, yeah, and then we're going to do Furiosa um, mm-hmm. upcoming this month. So, yeah, check that out if you so please, or just all our socials, you know, the general hoo-ha. If you mm-hmm. could give us stars... Oh my god, if you oh, could give that us would be stars. Just too much. Oh, you'd make me blush. No, it wouldn't be too much. Actually, it would be <laughs> just about the right amount of what I would like from you. Um, so if you could just go into your little app and give us a little review, if you would even write something, oh my god, that would be kind of a serve. Mm-hmm. Um, but you don't have to. That you, mm-hmm. If you're this far into this podcast, honestly, I love you no matter what. Just like this movie, you could be a little bit problematic, and also forgive it if you give us stars. Well, <laughs> mm, maybe I shouldn't say that. Uh, anyways, thank you for listening. Uh, we're excited to get into some queer rom coms for next month, so mm-hmm. stick around for that. And goodbye, and good night, and Jesus loves you. 